morning, everyone. I'm Rob Champa, Vice President of Marketing for Pixability. With me today is Kevin Dom, National Columnist for Smart Business Magazine, uh, an Inc. 500 entrepreneur, author of the upcoming Video Marketing for Dummies, and I think more interestingly, uh, author of Amazon number one bestseller, Roar, Get Heard in the Sales and Marketing Jungle. Uh, Kevin and I were talking earlier, he said, don't, don't read the book on an empty stomach. And uh, every time I read the book, I, I got hungry. So, Kevin, welcome. Thanks, great to, uh, have, great to have you here. So let's let's jump right into it. So um, over the past year, uh, I think a lot of us in marketing and business, we, we like to read. And although we spend our time on blogs and various things like that, uh, we do actually read books. Uh, some we read on our iPad. I think a, a majority we read on our iPad right now. And some we actually got uh, a physical copy. And I, I loved war. So t talk about the motivation, you chose the style. I, could, I read it in a day and a half. Yeah, yeah, I, I like to say it's a, it's a two-potty read is uh, how I describe <laughs> the length of the book. Um, you know, I, I, in all my time in marketing, uh, I kept running across the same issues with, with companies. Um, they didn't know what to say, how to say it, and who to say it to. Uh, and that's essentially what Roar is about. It's two simple concepts in the book. One is about uh, creating a compelling value proposition. Um, and it really starts with a piece that most companies forget about. Um, you know, what happens is we go into a networking scenario and we, we say to somebody, um, you know, hi, you know, I'm so-and-so, you know, I'm, I'm Kevin Dahm and I'm from Roaring Video. And the truth is they don't really care. And so the whole idea behind Roar is really starting with the empathy. Mm -hmm. um, why should they care? Mm -hmm. And addressing their pain. And so we do that in the first segment, the, 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 the value proposition. And then we talk about the different kinds of buyers. And uh, there's a nice 3,500-year-old uh, secret. I saw, I saw yeah, that. Yeah, yes, that, that identifies um, archetypes of buyers that, that have been dealt with for, for decades and centuries. And, uh, and so we address that, wrap it up in a nice story, put it in restaurants all around New York, and uh, it's it's just been a fun book a fun book and the, the book's done well. So. Did you gain any weight uh, doing this? I did. I tested all the restaurants myself. We even have reviews of the restaurants yeah, in the back yeah, of the yeah. book. And uh, and um, yes, and, and and actually, ironically, I just moved to a new area of New York. And it turns out I live near two of the restaurants in in the book. So who knew? Well, we'll, we'll wait for your your restaurant book coming up yeah. next. <laughs> That's right. Kevin hits an interesting point. Marketers oftentimes, as much as we talk about social media and all the various whiz-bang things, uh, we forget about the value proposition. Mm -hmm. It's a dangerous thing. And oftentimes, I know some firms that have actually outsourced their value proposition. Hmm. Okay, it's like outsourcing your kids. Right. Okay, there are certain things you don't do. So that's, that was a great point in the book. It's, and for those of you who feel you have the right value proposition, I think Aurora may be a great litmus test to go back. And, yeah. and they can actually get the those first two chapters are a free download. They can actually um, get those two chapters for free and test it out. Super. And that could be on your on the website? It is. It's on the website. They can find a sneak peek. And we'll talk about that toward, toward the end. Okay, so let's transition a little bit. Much like we're doing right now is uh, we like we like the video gospel. We're going to follow this biblical thing, huh? Sure. And what was your epiphany? How did you become a video evangelist? Well, um, I, uh, I liked video. I actually got in, inspired um, uh, by a speech that I saw from David Beerman Scott um, when Flip Camps first came out. And I had seen him speak uh, a few years ago just as I was starting to do more writing for, um, uh, for Smart Business. And he had you know, showed up a bright new shiny object, this Flip Cam, and talked about how that was going to change things. And I thought, wow, that's amazing. You know, HD video on a small amount of money. I want to play with that. And I started playing with video. Uh, I have a theater background, extensive theater background. And I've always written about the, the mix of art and business mm -hmm. and, and the advantages that people who have arts backgrounds have in, in being able to communicate in a more compelling way. Are manner. you saying that those of us with a computer science background are totally doing new video? I'm saying that you should really um, lend yourself to your artistic side. Wow. <laughs> we can talk about that after that. And we, we do. I mean, look, if, if, if there wasn't uh, a connection with arts, then you know, we wouldn't be supporting movies and TV mm -hmm. and, and theater. Those are all, all those things. And look, video is not new. Video has been around since, you know, what, 1947, since the commercials started mm -hmm. happening on TV. It's just now that it's gotten affordable. And instead of having to spend $100,000 to outfit a studio, now you can buy you know, a Mac that comes with iMovie and a, and, you know, and a Sony Bloggy and you're off on your way. And, 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 but the problem is, like any other marketing tool, is that without content, 
it doesn't matter. And that's that's where that's where war started in a in a highly digital world where everybody is going, oh, Twitter is the thing, and Facebook is the thing, and and all and, and all I can say is all those things don't matter if you don't have a compelling message to communicate. I think that, I think that's I think that's very true. I, I spoke with a group the other night, and we were discussing all modern techniques, and then, then we stepped back and we surveyed the audience, and we said, what's your biggest challenge? Um, aside from finding the right people, which we heard a lot. Hmm. Everybody said the, the, the creation of content. Yeah. And again, some folks have chosen to outsource. It depends on your organizational needs, but you know, the, the whole content. Well, and, and the problem is, is that you know, quite honestly, I find that a lot of uh, a lot of marketers struggle with content because you know we went through a twenty year cycle where you didn't have to be really compelling. Mm -hmm. You know, we were in a greed based society. People just bought because it seemed. Well, like we had it was that idea. totally boring ten page white paper that nobody read, but. You know, our boss was happy. That's right, and and but now it's a different dynamic in the community. I mean, people are are fear based now, and they're not going to part with their money just for anything. They're not going to change their behavior just for anything. Uh, one of my smart business columns addresses that that new uh, type of mentality. So to get people to move, you've got really got to overcome the existing fears that they have, and the only way you're going to do that is with really compelling content. And what brought me to video is that look. You know, a book can communicate. You talked about Roar being a short read, but you still have some have to have somebody take a day and a half to be able to communicate mm -hmm. that. Um, and video, which is something that we're, we've been ingrained since the, the 50s to watch all the time anyway, is a natural way to communicate a tremendous amount of information. And I don't mean a lot of points. In fact, quite the opposite. Um, I really take companies and get them to uh, really narrow down a, a particular point for a particular Which video. Which is a hard thing for many companies. Hard thing to do. A lot of the videos that fail, fail because they want to say everything in one video. And where video is really powerful is to take an individual point and then provide all the background information in a ridiculously small amount of time. Yeah. And, and you do that you know, through archetypes, and you do that through imagery, and you do that through interaction. Uh, and that's what video does well. It makes, a, makes an emotional connection. Yeah. I, used to, I used to do a similar exercise with uh, when I had young marketing people on the team. Every, you know, marketers love PowerPoint. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll bash PowerPoint video in a moment. But you know, the new marketing guys, what they do is the great, point, the great part about PowerPoint is you get 400 bullet points, and if you use two point font, mm -hmm. you can get them all there. <laughs> so I, I tell I tell the teams, okay, you get you have 400 bullet points, get it down to three. Right. In in the struggle, we as humans hate to filter. Yes. How do you? How do you filter that? Well, and the joy, well, the joy with video is, is that you don't necessarily have to filter, and that's one of the differences between true video and PowerPoint. You know, PowerPoint video, dare we say? But but even when you look at it, so so right, your your scenario is, I have 100 pieces of information I need to communicate, and now I'm going to figure out how to say that in three sentences. And chances are you're going to go to a higher level. Right. And that's the way that you're going to resolve that particular issue. If you say to me in video, Kevin, I have 100 points of information that I need to communicate, and, um, and I only have three seconds to do it, now what I'm going to look for is a piece of imagery that actually transfers a tremendous amount of that information just by the interaction Excellent. that you saw in those three seconds. That's the power of video. My, my favorite important. example, if I can share an example, Absolutely. There's, a wonderful, uh, there's a wonderful video that, uh, uh, that is a condom commercial. And the, the story behind it is a couple, uh, a young couple that's making out. Is this an American commercial? No, it's European. Uh, you know, and the, and the father, but the father comes, comes home and sees his little and sees his little girl and, and, and all the fun ensues, right? The, mo the most beautiful piece in that video is before the father comes home, there is this picture of the girl, the, the room pans, there's this picture of the girl as a little child. And in that moment, you immediately recognize that, oh my God, this is somebody's daughter. It's, it's like you knew exactly where it was going. All this information that was communicated in that, just that two frame piece. We got you right there. That's the power of video. And, 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 and that's why I love the medium. That's why it's so much fun to play with. Oh, it's great. And if Kevin raised a point earlier. Uh, you mentioned $100,000 for a uh, for a video production studio, um, yeah, I've done that and, <laughs> and spent that. It's a lot easier with uh, you know, with an iPhone or with, with digital SLR these days in, in some production. All right, let's change gears a little bit. You work with entrepreneurs and business coaches. Uh, what are their challenges? And, and what do you see? Are you tying video into their challenges? Or 
how are, do they have a broader challenge for bulk marketing? Well, I, th I think I think that's the case. I mean, look, I, I th um, the consulting work that I do centers around communications in general. It's about getting a compelling message. Video is kind of the, the the fun thing at the moment. They all recognize that they need video because of you know the the, the increase in, in viewership, uh, the increase in search engine mm -hmm, optimization mm -hmm. and conversion. So they're all motivated to work on video. Um, you know, like any really good tool. Um, a really good tool works really well for somebody who knows how to use the tool and has the skills and everything prepared. Uh, I think we've proven that with golf clubs. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly right. And and yet, the better the golf club, the worse somebody like me is going to play with it because because it requires that skills. And so, it, what what's happening with video is it's blatantly showing them where they're lacking in their other pieces. That a, a white paper, you know, won't necessarily lose you over. But you show that video and people look at it and. And you can tell, you know, that the message wasn't there and it wasn't compelling. Yeah. In fact, the, I made reference to the audience from the other night, and what I told them, I said, video isn't a panacea. I said, if you've got lousy content, video is going to show that you have really lousy content. That's right. So that comes into play. And, and I think it, the good part is that I, I think that it does a better job uh, of showing the, the marketers and the CEOs um, where their failings are in such a way that they can't deny it. Right, because Ooh, when now you deal, they, now you deal with human nature, <laughs> but it's a real factor, right? Because we all have our own egos, and we all want to be good at stuff. But it becomes really blatant, and I know that there are marketers out there that will do videos, going, "We're going to do this video thing," and then they don't show it. They don't show it to anybody because they're embarrassed about what it sees. Yeah. And the answer isn't to avoid video. The answer is to either get better at doing it or hire people who can help you get better no, at doing it. Absolutely. So, let, so the final point, um, and we. we briefly touched upon this, and the, the biggest challenge for marketers and businesses isn't necessarily video, isn't necessarily the web, you know, isn't social media. We made reference to content. It's generating, as we said, it's generating content. Where do you dig down and find it? How do organizations find it? Do we recycle content from other areas and embellish it with our own, you know, with our own little veneer? What do, well, what do we do? I think that, that um, Content is about your community. So if you're, uh, uh, if you're a narrow niche business, it's very easy to find content because you really understand your customer and you understand the emotions that they go through in the process that they buy. If you're dealing with a, with, with a broader community, that's a little harder because you have to find content that's going to relate to everyone. Particularly when you're dealing with humor, which as you know, that's a, that's a big piece of what we do, you know, um, is, is bring the humor into the process. But, but look, the content is all around you. If you're truly digging down to find the empathy of your customer, that will become very obvious about the content that you need to communicate. And then it's just a matter of what are the choke points, as I call choke points, the areas where there's inconsistency, redundancy, um, and, um, uh, and, and confusion around the things that you're trying to communicate. And that could be you know, to your staff, to your customers, to your vendors. Those are the pieces that you want to attack with video and then find the empathy and the humor to be able to make it compelling and memorable. Yeah, it, I'll give an example. We had, I was viewing videos of one of our customers. Uh, they, were, they were dealing with sheet metal. And good video oftentimes requires good audio. If, you, if your audio is terrible, you, you really impact from a great video. And it was cacophony. And these, these machines and everything else, and when I was talking with the folks involved in it, I said, what, it's, it's a little bit noisy, huh? They said, our community, they spend time they listen to the videos. They will even close their eyes just so they can hear how the machine is working. Mm -hmm. So the community rallies around noise. Mm -hmm. And so all the videos that we did hit it. So that, that covers some of the stuff that we wanted to talk about. Uh, Kevin, you're doing some great stuff. Uh, you're making the world a much more interesting place. Uh, check out the book and uh, the upcoming video marketing for dummies as well. And thanks for being here. Thank you, Rob. Take care.